Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and today I'm going to answer uh, 10 frequently asked questions um, that have appeared in relation to Project Mjolnir. Um, there is a channel on the Discord where you can pitch a question and then the community will up or down vote uh, based on whether or not they like the question and want the question answered. Um, and then every so often um, I'll select 10 of the questions and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So if you have any questions in regards to Mjolnir, um, head over to the Discord and ask the question in the Project Mjolnir FAQ channel. So let's, let's get into this. So the first question is from Spartan Taco 143 It's quite a long um, question, but it boils down to, am I looking effectively for um, volunteers, assistance, help from... Um, different people with different backgrounds and expertise in regards to building Mjolnir. Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, the long answer is I am, but uh, it depends upon the stage in which I'm developing at any given time. So I've already sought the um, the help of people who work with fabrics because I'm utterly inexperienced with working with fabrics. Um, I know my material science, but I, I, I'm not much good at on a sewing machine. So I've already sought some expertise uh, outside of my own capabilities in order to get certain aspects fulfilled. I'd be an idiot to not do so. Um, I can't, I can't possibly sit here with a straight face and say that I can do all of this on my own with no help from anybody. It's, it's utter BS. Um, the very fact that it's a crowdfunder indicates that I just I can't just do it on my own I that's why I've I've asked for you guys to to, to help which you've so far you I think so far we've just crested about 10,000 uh, 10,000 pounds which is fantastic really really thank you everyone who's donated so far um, you're you're effectively my financiers you, you're allowing this project to happen which is just phenomenal so that's obviously help that I've I've needed. Yes, I'm going to need help with um, aspects of the robotic system and the mechatronics, um, programming. Uh, I'm, although I'm experienced with programming and, and a lot of these other systems, I'm certainly not an expert, um, or I'm certainly not you know to the proficiency level that some people are at. Uh, and so I would be I would be really really short sighted to not employ the assistance and help of other people. Um, I will probably bring online a an applications system, so to speak, uh, where people can. It's not like a job kind of, you know, send me a CV, but you know, people have a, have a vested interest in in helping out in a in a, in a more um, physical means, um, getting things fabricated, um, this, that, and the other. Obviously, the logis the logistics of of shipping things, especially if if some of the guys who are, who are applying and, and are interested in helping out are stateside or, or are outside of the UK. Um, the logistics of shipping things to and for to and from would be um, uh, would be an obstacle we'd have to look at ways to overcome because I, I didn't actually factor that aspect of things into my budget in the first instance. I was um, running off of the the the, the expectation uh, that I could get majoritively firms, organisations, and individuals within the UK to help me do certain aspects but things like programming that's transient we can send over the code and you know that's 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 easier from a logistical point of view but with hardware um obviously shipping and, and shipping fees and customs fees and, and whatever else I'm, I'm fleshing out the finer details but yes in short i'm looking for help um but i'll i'll outline in due course what i'm looking for help with um so keep your eyes peeled. I'll, I'll update everyone as and when that happens. Uh, so question two is from Leon. Have I considered something functionally similar to ammunition feed shoots for areas where you need articulation and it can be used in conjunction with hydraulics and provides a flexible subframe? Um, yeah, so effectively ammunition um, feed shoots are effectively just like articulated you know, flexible articulated um, structures um, that only have one or two degrees of, of rotation so to speak um, so for example the the one that you see in the comment there is it, it, it covers like this kind of movement but won't flex to the sides um, which is what you need for an ammunition suit shoot because you don't want the bullets being 
fed into the, you know, it's, it's, it makes sense. Yes, I've looked at the articulation systems um, of various different systems um, and platforms in the world. Um, for flex for flexibility, I'm, uh, the, the, the main issue with, with um, flexibility in regards to a substructure is the abdominal area. Um, the chest, so to speak, doesn't really move sort of that much, you know, as in like bending. There's a small degree of um, of, of of movement in the um, in the upper spine, but nowhere near as much as the, the as the mid spine and upper um, upper lumbar. That's where most of your movement is. That's why your abdominals are there. And the the, the issue there is that the point of rotation is within the body and the spine is a compound joint so there's it's a joint upon a joint upon a joint upon a joint um if you were to do just a, like two hinges either side that's a, that, that, that basically um, carried the weight of the upper body through those hinges into the lower body yeah if you're just upright that's fine but the second you bend forward it's actually going to cause a compression a compressive uh, compressive force on um on your spine because it's a mul it's multiple points of, rot of, of, of articulation, um, rather than just one hinged pivot point, so to speak. So yes, it would be fine for that. You know, the vertebrae that are parallel to that that axis of rotation. Um, but any above or below, it would create a crushing compression force on your spine. You don't you do not want that, especially when you're carrying a significant weight on the torso. Um, so I've I've looked at various different systems again with the, if you put hinges either side okay yeah you you've got that one bend forward you still got the compression but you've got no flex side to side whatsoever because they're they're hinges and they only bend in one 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 axis um, I have covered this I think in some of the update videos um, the the func the, the 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 functional articulation system I'm using for the abdominal which is the major issue um, is basically a ring at the lower um, chest and a ring at the waist. And they are they are bridged by um, by basically pneumatic passive pneumatic pistons. Um, obviously, pneumatic being fluid based, as opposed to um, pneumatic. What am I talking about? Hydraulic. Sorry, being fluid based. Pneumatic is gas. So yeah, sorry. Hydraulic pistons. So there will be a fluid inside it. Fluid is non-compressible. Air is compressible. That's why I wanted to make that clear difference there um, so it, hydraulic pistons would be connected to the waist ring at an angle and they'd meet a, 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 mid, a mid section connection point which would be sort of halfway up the, the, the abdominals around the belly button le level and then from there two more would go out to the ring around the lower chest and that's just like for example on the front and they that would be mirrored all the way around um, and each piston um, each piston at one side would be connected directly to the piston on the opposing side of the body so that when the when the piston at the front compresses uh, when you bend forward it forces the sorry it forces the fluid out of that piston through the tubing and into the piston at the back the piston at the back which opens that one up now obviously that's a passive system so that would still require your muscle effort in order to do it but because fluid is non-compressible and because it's it would effectively allow multiple points of rotation and pivoting it effectively acts as kind of a ball like a very large ball joint um, a compound ball joint that would then effectively carry the weight of the of the torso um, and transmit that through into the um, into the lower legs and then obviously down into in, into the into the ground through the support structure um, because the fluid is non-compressible would trans transmit the weight um, but would also allow you sort of to, to flex or flex around like this I'm actually in the process I did make a like a really 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 crude prototype a scaled prototype sort of about this big a couple of years back to explore the possibility of, of whether or not this will work I'm, I'm revisiting that and I'm creating another scaled prototype I'll 3d print the components which makes it much better because the, the the big bastard 3d printer allows me you know the, the 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 build size that's required to do it and i used um i used syringes effectively as, as the as the um, hydraulic pistons and just connected them together with uh six millimeter out, um, outer diameter four millimeter inner diameter uh pvc tubing pretty straightforward so I'm, I'm looking at i'm looking at creating another another scale prototype so i can demonstrate exactly what i'm talking about so because i know that the, what i've just said is quite sometimes quite difficult to to grasp so to speak 
Um, the powered side of that just comes through using uh, uh, linear actuators or, or belt drive, something like that effectively. That when your abdominals engage and you actually put the, the physical muscle effort into bending, it transmits through muscle sensors to, um, to a microcontroller which outputs to the drive control which then basically turns on a motor that would pull that down. So that, that gives you the powered aspect but it still allows the entire system to float on this, on this non-compressible fluid kind of cushion so to speak. Um, it's quite complex and convoluted but I will I'll, I'll show a better example of that when I've finished the, the, the scaled prototype. Um, so yeah, I, in short I have considered it but I, I've opted for something slightly different. The next question is from Adrian Watson. He says, I am an armourer with a bit of experience in designing fully enclosed armours, so I know a little bit about building steel exoskeletons for people and keeping mobility. I also run a power armour research group on Facebook and know some exoskeleton and power armour builders. I intend to use... I intend to use in all of this to help me build my own real power armour, but I would love to talk design with you and share any help I can. Um, that's brilliant. So, I... <laughs> not so much a question as a as a as a, as a statement, but <laughs> nevertheless, yeah, okay. Um, I can see obviously the the the, the armor that you've you've developed there is very it's very like medieval knight style armor, very cool. Um, yeah, I've 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 looked at the, the 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 flexibility in regards to the armor systems, and obviously Mjolnir in its in its raw form is not is not perfect as far as full range of motion. Um, but you also simultaneously don't want full range of motion. You want m very, very slightly less than full range of motion to protect yourself from hyperextension and the like. Um, especially in the in the regards to abdominal here. Um, obviously, this plate armor. I know I'm. I know it's very far away, but this plate armor directly underneath the chest here actually retracts upwards and allows chief to bend forwards. They slide over each other. I have looked at the 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 the, the articulating aspect of the armor, um, and I've I've implemented different techniques. Uh, to to cover joints in particular, especially around the abdominal, um, with yeah, effectively plate armor that slides over each other. So it's going to look aesthetically slightly different from how Mjolnir looks here, um, but will still serve the purpose. Um, the fact you've got a Facebook group that researches this is that's awesome. The fact that you've you've managed to get a group of people together who, who are all interested in it, I might have a look myself. So if you've got a link, I'd love to see it. Um, and um, as far as sharing ideas and concepts again i if i if you send me a link i can jump in and and i can i can share any any experience expertise and and whatnot um, from my end obviously i've been researching this for 15 years um so it's <laughs> i've got a fairly substantial knowledge on the various systems that go into this so obviously i've, I've got a lot of information i could share and i'm sure you do too so send me a link and We'll communicate to and from, and I'll, if people are interested, I'll see if I can make that link uh, available to other people as well. Next one is from um, BSG22 Wiki, um, one of our precursors, so one of the older members of our Discord. He's been with us a long time. Prescription helmet visors, yes or no, given you have glasses and all that. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's not impossible but it's difficult to implement prescription lenses into a visor. Um, it's not impossible, it, 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 it can be done. Now, you have to bear in mind, so the, the, the idea, I've, I know I've said this quite a few times before, the, the idea of, of building Mjolnir is to explore the technologies that go into Mjolnir, to demonstrate that it can be done with synonymous technologies that are available now in, 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 in our modern times, um, with compromises, obviously, because I'm not going to be able to build, you know, the, the, the Mjolnir exactly as it is in the law, because that's currently, from a technological standpoint, impossible. I'm building a, a modern day approximation as close as I can get to Mjolnir. That's that's the goal. I'm building one or two suits, um, mainly for the for the purpose of of of, of showing that this can be done. But also to to reverse engineer the technologies that go into it, and make those more available, and to also demonstrate that the technology that goes into Mjolnir can be applied and can be applied well to um, circumstances and situations outside of um, of a powered exoskeleton platform. For example, 
as you've said in the, in the, in the question, the visor, the augmented reality HUD system. That can be applied as its own standalone product. And they have every intention of doing that. Um, the, the idea is to reverse engineer the HUD systems that go into it. So I'm sure if, 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 they, if you don't know already from one of the other update videos here somewhere, there we go. I've, re I've taken receipt of the laser-based Pico projector module um, that projects the, 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 in the uh, laser image onto the inner surface of the visor onto this refractive membrane. This has actually got another membrane on it to protect it because so, it's adhesive on one side. So that effectively will refract the light of this. This is actually the laser-based module. So that would be adhered to the inner surface of the visor. And this would be inside of the helmet. The actual screen for the projection unit is there. That would be mounted inside of the helmet and that would project a laser-based image onto the inner surface of the visor which would be refracted by that membrane. Um, and because it's because it's laser light, it's infinitely focused. Um, this will make sense in a minute. Because it's infinitely focused, you don't need to worry about where you look in your visual range for it to be in focus. And it also means that it bypasses any needs for, for prescriptions because the light is coherent. So even though your own lens may, may have degraded to the point that you need glasses, the image will actually be in focus from that's being displayed from the HUD. So the idea is, because of how small this is, and I mean, yeah, there's, there's a control board and a few other bits and pieces that come with it, um, some less essential than others. The idea, considering that this can be powered from a USB cable, so 5.2 volts at 0.1 amp, um, the fact that that can be powered from something, you know, from such a small power supply, the intention is to integrate this into a small mod module. I, I can reorientate this um, and rework the board a little bit because there's a little bit of additional give, so to speak, or a little bit of additional space I can work with. So to linearize this, I can even mount it that way and use a, use a prism like, a, like this. This needs to be polished, but this is a, a prism I've 3D printed um, in clear resin. It needs to be polished. Once it's polished, effectively, it can be, so, so to speak, put onto the over the lens of the projector like this and obviously that's now effectively redirected the image to this face here it needs to be polished but it's you get the idea so this could be mounted effectively in a module that could connect to the arm of your glasses and then project the image to the inner surface of your glasses so if you've got prescription glasses already you just put that membrane on the inner surface of your glasses put this module onto the arm of your glasses calibrate so it projects onto the inner surface here you now have augmented reality this will connect via wide eye more than likely which is basically it's wi-fi but for displays to your smart device and it will display proprietary information from your smart device onto your visual range um, from a tiny module on the side of the glasses powered by an onboard lithium polymer battery so the idea is to make this um, available for people um, as a product as a standalone product that you can use and you know that this was developed for Mjolnir, but you're using it in day-to-day -day life because a lot of the things that go into Mjolnir can be applied to day-to-day -to -day life. So the need to do a visor that is prescription is kind of uh, negated because if you, the prescription aspect of the visor, I, I mean, yeah, for me, if I'm wearing the helmet, if I take my glasses off, I've not got bad vision. Um, distance it becomes a little blurry and I mean and I mean a little bit blurry um, but for, for, for me wearing the helmet I could there's enough space in the helmet that I could actually wear it with my glasses I could wear contacts um, so that circumnavigates the need so to speak to make a prescription visor <laughs> But I understand that if, if something like the environment suit, for example, with an integrated helmet and a heads-up display became a thing, that I might need to rethink that. But at the moment, prescription helmet visor is kind of negligible. It's, it's not really needed. And with the idea of reverse engineering this stuff and making it, assuming I don't throw it on the floor, making it publicly available, again, it's, it's infinitely focused. You can put it on your own prescription glasses. 
you can circumnavigate it. And I will create also a proprietary version um, without any description lens um, for people who don't have any sight, sight problems but want to wear something that looks cool. So that was a very long question to a very sh a very long answer to a very short question. So sorry, sorry about that. Um, the next question is from Fallen Fallen to Die. For the pump issue, you might um, try uh, cooling system per side to include power system cooling. Also, to deal with the atmosphere issues, maybe a HEPA filter system. HEPA filter would also be able to supply cleaned air to the wearer. You might also want to try some sort of temperature monitoring system. Okay. Um, per side to include power system cooling okay so this is um, this, again this is more more less of a question more of a, a, a recommendation perhaps also uh, I, well, I suppose there is you know also to deal with the atmosphere issues maybe a HEPA filter system okay so yeah I have it I have full intention for the helmet to actually build in a HEPA, a HEPA filter system into the helmet um, so the air is filtered as it's pulled in you breathe and then it's, it's exhaust, exhausted and it's filtered as it goes out as well. So I, I have all intentions of putting HEPA filters in. Um, so that answers those parts of the question. You can also uh, try adding some sort of temperature monitoring system. Again, I have um, electric uh, electric based um, thermometer probes, um, temperature probes that can be um, surface mounted on different circuits and circuits and inner surfaces of the environment suit and the actual um, control unit effectively on the backpack and everything like that to monitor system temperature and the user's you know physical temperature and i'm I, yeah i am looking to automate a lot of that process anyway um and for pump issues the, the pump i've got at the moment is a, is a is a it can run at 12 volts uh pumps 30 liters a minute as i recall but um i've got um the one pump effectively in place at the moment um, running at 6 volts because it's very quiet running at that and that, that slows down the, the, the feed rate a little bit it's, I think about 50% drop 15 litres per, uh, per, per minute um, and it seems sufficient at the moment obviously that's not to say that down the line I might want to upgrade that or um, or make it more more comprehensive effectively in, in cooling capability and it's not to say that there's not other systems out there that I perhaps um, uh, haven't haven't um, considered implementing yet to circumnavigate um, heating and cooling systems um, and put it in more of a tidy form factor. So I, I'm I'm looking into a lot of that. Yes. Um, Fractal Mind says an idea for the vacuum heat radiation issue: make the back radiator surface unfold into radiator wings when in a vacuum. This could increase the surface um, enough for the proper heat radiation, and your suit now has wings. Or include a compressed a compressed gas tank into which the heat is dumped and then vented into multiple directions to prevent target uh, targeted thrust. In a zero G vacuum, the motors of the suit could be driven at low power too, so the heat needs to be radiated away. Including electric heating for vacuum temperature keeping is relatively easy. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. The, so uh, the Mjolnir the, the Mjolnir version I'm developing. Obviously, I do have the foresight of making it vacuum rated. So in theory, it could be used in EVA maneuvers. It's not quite as simple as that. Uh, there are other aspects that need to be yet taken into consideration. The extremes of temperature when you're in sunlight and in shade is something that needs to be taken into consideration. The internal pressured environment, uh, whether it's mechanical back pressure that maintains the pressured environment or whether it's uh, an actual atmosphere that's maintained. Um, the, vac the environment suit itself needs to be treated so it's effectively vacuum proof with, with hermetic seals. Uh, gloves, uh, helmet, and things like that, so it maintains an actual livable environment inside. There's a lot of other aspects that need to go into um, into developing the Mjolnir suit to effectively be capable to deal with um, being in vacuum or being in an EVA maneuver. That's something I'm 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 looking into the res the, the research and the, the material science and the um, the requirements of a system like that. Um, uh, but in the in the onset, as we are at the moment, I'm in phase one at something that is most definitely down the line. Um, the the thing I want to get across first is I want to develop the suit so it actually works in a close approximation to how the suit works in um, the Halo universe. So it will be a powered exoskeleton. It will be majoritively um, 
bulletproof. Not entirely. Obviously, you can't make everything. You can't make anything 100% bulletproof. Um, and if you've got enough of any material, it becomes bulletproof. Air is bulletproof. If you fire a bullet, you know, in in an atmosphere and it stays in the air long enough, it will eventually slow down the bullet to such a, such a point that it becomes non-lethal. Um, but in the same breath, obviously, you, you can't uh, you know you can't wear air effectively as body armor. So. Um, yeah, I have every intention of making um, the suit as accurate to the law as humanly possible, but the environment systems um, being rated for vacuum, um, and, and specifically in, for EVA maneuvers in space, that's definitely something that's down the line. Um, the more immediate things that I want to do is, is get the system sealed so you can maintain a breathable atmosphere inside in a toxic environment. So if it's if it's smoky, if there's, if there's gases or... Um, it's a toxic environment in general. The atmosphere is is is, is bad to breathe in or whatever. Um, it will it will filter the air effectively and, and m maintain your, your a livable environment for you. That's that's the that's the the things I'm looking at in the first instance. Um, down the line, I'll look at EVA sort of systems. Um, even though I've already done a lot of the research that's required for it. Um, and as far as heating in fact, it, or radiating heat away in a vacuum, you're absolutely right um, because. Uh, because there's nothing to conduct or convect heat into when you're in space because there's no there's no liquid medium like uh, an atmosphere. Uh, the only way that heat escapes from a, an object is by radiative heat, uh, which is much, much, much less efficient than um, conduction and convection. Uh, the radiator wings is a really cool idea. Um, I'd have to look at the form factor to see if, if something like that would fit. Uh, if not, you're, you're absolutely right. I'd have to look at uh, 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 redirecting the heat of the systems into something that can effectively hold the heat for a, for a time, and then let it out when you get into an environment that's that's more um, survivable. So if if down the line I manage to develop um, Miano systems to have EVA capability and it could remain in EVA with a with a you know rebreathe the system for say 45 minutes, for example. Um, then I'd need to look into the heat, the heating systems, um, or, or dealing with the heat of the of the the armor altogether, um, and see if there's a way I can effectively store the heat um, away from the body and away from the systems for up to 45 minutes. And then once the person, once the suit is back in a breathable environment again, uh, with an with a uh, an atmosphere around them, it can then conduct and convect that heat away and dump it after the fact. Um, I've not ruled out the possibility of actually using the armor plates themselves to do that because obviously the armor plates are going to be titanium, some of them composites, but um, obviously a large surface area of metal around, around, you know, shell around the body, in theory, could hold a quite a quite high levels of heat. But you've also got to bear in mind that when you're in sunlight in um, vacuum, it can be a couple of hundred degrees centigrade. So there are some obstacles to overcome. I'm looking into it basically. Next question is from Ghost E4. What will be done with all the questions in this FAQ? Will they be answered in the next update video, or whether will there be a dedicated FAQ video when you go through and answer what you can? Moving on. Um, Little Tech Witch said, uh, "Saw the video just now. Something that might help with the, um, help you with the sensors in the form-fitting suit could be e-textiles that integrate sensors into the fabric itself." Yes, I've seen I've seen similar systems. I'm basically using conductive materials and sensors, um, surface-mounted effectively onto the fabrics themselves, so that the, the effectively the fabric becomes a smart fabric. I've seen that. Um, and I'm looking into ways in which that could be implemented. In particular, I'm looking into ways in which that could be implemented down the line for the muscle sensing system. Because if you had a conductive system that's actually in the skin tight undersuit, and so that when you're, you put the skin tight suit on, it effectively makes a conductive bridge between you and the uh, between you and the um, skin tight undersuit that you can then use to pick up the muscle impedance. Um, that circumnavigates the need for the electro myograph sensor pads and and sensor cables running up it can all be integrated so yes i'm looking into it um i'm talking to some textiles kind of people who are, are much more experienced in textiles than i am um and asking them whether that's viable basically so yes i have i have looked into that a prophet of fabrication said would you ever be interested in approaching other youtubers or such to help build this uh, say for example the hacksmith 
yes, I have considered it. Um, the only issue therein is something similar to what I, I said in, in, in one of the earlier questions in regards to um, looking for help from the community and people that, are, that have got expertise in certain fields. The logistics of moving things back and forth um, can become quite difficult. Um, but yes, I have considered it. Um, and I will probably pursue it in some regards. For example, um, I'm going to make a 12 inch by 12 inch block of all the different layers of Mjolnir that I'm going to be using in the suit um, for the sake of ballistic testing. And I'll probably send that to someone like uh, Demolition Ranch if they're interested in doing it, uh, just to see the viability of just how bulletproof Mjolnir armor really is. Um, Hacksmith Industries, I know they, they, they build a lot of stuff like the Iron Man systems and you know, they're, they're working with a lot of stuff and I've, I know they've got a lot of um, machines and fabrication capabilities um, in that regard. Again, I'd, I'd entertain the idea of a cross-collaboration. Um, at this early stage, I don't think it would be very viable um, because I'm managing to keep on top of most of the Phase 1 aspects myself. Definitely when we get to Phase 2 and Phase 3, uh, would be when I'd be looking uh, to do something like that, especially hopefully when this this blows up a bit more. Um, uh, hopefully, as a consequence of of the the the, the video that's eventually going to come once the machine is fixed of the of the helmet being three D printed in titanium. Um, I'm hoping that's going to that's going to kind of blow things up a little bit and really you know draw draw some some heavy attention in um in this direction, which would be cool. Then I'll look at going a little bit you know, a little bit bigger and, and, and go into other YouTubers. So yes, it's, it's something I'm, I'm definitely entertaining the idea of. And question 10, 4 asked, will it be ready by the time the inevitable in alien invasion happens? It depends if that, is that if that's going to happen this year, no. If that happens next year, possibly. If it happens the year after, I hope so. <laughs> um... There's nothing stopping me from changing the changing the changing the the, the systems that I'm going to be developing between now and then. Obviously, I could do the I, I, you know I want to aim for going whole hog and do the full powered exoskeleton with Mjolnir style armor and this that and the other. I could, in theory, make all the environment systems and all the other uh, um, soft armor systems and everything that goes with it, um, and then do a passive support structure and do ODST armor plating. I could do something similar to SPI armor, although I'm I'm looking into the particulars of of the passive camouflage system that. SPI uses. I could even look at fabricating something similar to the marine body armor. Um, so uh, there's different layers in which I could I could do, um, but it all includes development time. It all includes you know prototyping and, and fixing mistakes and going back to the drawing board and refining and developing. So is it going to be ready by the alien invasion? Time scale, time scale. Um, so yeah, in the grand scheme of things, that's that's the ten questions. Um, the Mjolnir FAQ channel will now be reopened to ask a load of, a load of new questions again. Pop over to Discord, ask your questions, upvote, downvote, and expect another FAQ video in due course. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.